up everyone and I'm back with another time lapse and in this video I'm going to be painting a working cocker spaniel called Blue. Now I completed this painting a few months ago and for people that might also follow me on Facebook you've probably seen updates on Blue posted on my page a while back. It was one of the updates on his progress that managed to get a massive 18k likes which is unknown for me I don't normally get that kind of engagement on my posts but I somehow managed it with that one anyway I'm working in acrylic as usual and it's mostly Windsor and Newton and some Liquitex although I do plan to increase the Liquitex I'm getting ready for some new paints and thinking I might get Liquitex instead of Windsor and Newton at least for some of colours and I'm working on Fabriano Artistico hot press watercolour paper at £300 weight. That's 640 GSM. It is sort of A3 size but I've squared it off so that it fits him in better. Otherwise I'd have a lot of space above and below him. We are chopping edges of his ears off on either side. So I often do this with portraits, you know the paintings. I'll often just square it off a little bit, make it a little bit less tall and a little bit more wide and then it fits the subject in a lot nicer. I gave him a background colour that sort of matched his own coloration and I didn't do as usual um, the just a straight one tone for background. I did like a variation of tones, sort of like a really subtle mottled effect because I just thought it looked nicer on this piece and it did. And because he's got a lot of backlighting, so he's got a lot of nice highlights around the edges of him, especially on top of his head and his ears and things like that, I just kept the, the colour of the background and the tone of the background a, a little bit darker than them so that the highlights on the edges of him could really stand out and pop against that background colour. Now, as I already mentioned, Blue is a working cocker spaniel, an English working cocker spaniel. A lot of my viewers are in USA, so you might not be very familiar with this breed and type of dog. In UK we have as English Cocker Spaniels, but we have as show strain and as working strain. So when you get your working strain, we call them working Cocker Spaniels, and that's what he is. And I noticed on my Facebook page a few people weren't sure, probably people from USA, they weren't sure what breed he were because he just didn't match up to any breed that they're familiar with. And I know that the USA Cocker Spaniel, you know, the American Cocker Spaniel is quite a bit different, you know, in its head shape and what have you. And it's mostly like a show type dog as opposed to, you know, a functional working dog which is what the working cock spaniel is it's the original working type spaniel you know that the show strains originally came from and they're really popular in UK you get a lot of them just as pets as gun dogs also in dog sports like agility you get them and they're really popular there and they tend to be quite a happy but really energetic kind of dog so they're not for the kind of owner that just wants to have a hearth rug or you know just a little bit of a wander around block once a day or something like that you know they need to work you know like a, a lot of other working breeds like border collies and what have you they tend to get on quite well with border collies border collies tend to like uh, spaniels a lot because they're very similar in some senses but very different in others so the the personalities tend not to clash between them two breeds i find so it can often be a good combination when people have multiple dogs, like a lot of regulars people do. So if they've got collies and spaniels, they're more likely to get along fine as opposed to a different combination like collies and terriers, which can clash pretty badly in my experience. <laughs> So anyway, this is not the first work that Blue's owners had done by me. He is a first Cocker Spaniel and he were a little bit of a culture shock. She's had various other types of dogs. Uh, she's got poodles and she's also had boxers and what have you. But yeah, the working Cocker has been quite a bit of hard work for her. I did do a painting a few years ago of all four of her poodles that she has and I've also done some drawings and one of the drawings I did for her is actually on this channel 
It were a charcoal drawing that featured her from behind and then two of her puddles looking over each shoulder. It don't get many views, so if, if you want to have a, a quick look at it, it's only a couple of minutes long, then you can go and have a look at that as well. Speaking of charcoal drawings, I did a, a recent poll on my community tab and it seems that not many of my present audience want charcoal. I don't get through enough acrylic paintings to do enough videos of acrylic paintings. The vast majority of commissions that I do are charcoal drawings because they are a lot cheaper so I can actually do a lot more videos of them so I'm still going to post videos of them and then I might be able to attract some charcoal people a long way as well and not just acrylic people. And things get a little bit more awkward when the acrylic paintings are secret gifts as well because I might not be able to show them for months before they get actually gifted. And they also seem to be exclusively dogs and more often than not the same kind of dogs like a lot of collies and what have you. Whereas when I'm doing my charcoal drawings I do sometimes get some other animals as well like cats and horses and what have you. So it just adds a little bit more variety. It also means a little bit more variety for me with regards to mediums because I like to loosen up a little bit more with charcoal. And it's nice to loosen up in between the really tight work that you see here when I'm using acrylic, which I, I still enjoy and I'll still always do, but it's just nice to loosen up in between and do a, some work that's still quite realistic, but it's, it's worked a lot faster and I can just get on with it a little bit quicker without it being so painstaking. Charcoal so easy to use and quick to get results with. So I really recommend anybody trying charcoal. It tends to have a reputation for being messy and difficult but it's not actually that bad especially when using the charcoal pencils. So, so yeah, I would definitely recommend just buying yourself some charcoal pencils and some paper, perhaps toned paper and maybe black paper and get some white charcoal as well like me and have a dabble about and you might find that you really enjoy it like I have. I mean, I, a few years ago I would never have seen myself working in charcoal but I absolutely love it now. And I am thinking of doing more actual tutorials for charcoal as well. It's mostly been acrylic so far but why not do some for charcoal as well? Speaking of which, if there's what you'd like to see on this painting as a tutorial, then let me know in comments. If you don't let me know, then I can't know what you want. I can also do tutorials from any of my previous paintings that you've seen on this channel, so if there's what else in any of the previous paintings that you'd like to see a, a more in-depth tutorial on, let me know and I'll see about doing that as well. So now I'm just working on the, the neck and the top part at shoulders of this dog. I'm just adding in the detail. I didn't have to airbrush the base of this dog, it just seemed to blend nicely into the background on its own without any airbrushing at end. But when I've finished it, like in the other videos, I'll give you a final reveal and let you see some close-ups of the actual painting. A lot of paintings that I've done more recently have been a lot of cool tones, so it's nice to do a painting with a lot of warm tones in it for a change. It's quite fitting at the minute because we're in autumn now and we've got a lot of nice autumn colours going on and it seems to be even more colourful this year for whatever reason, I don't know what that means but it just seems to have been more autumn colour where I live compared to usual and it seems to have come a little bit sooner as well, although saying that it's been quite mild, I mean, weather's not been cold for the time of year, it's been quite mild so... It still remains to be seen what kind of a winter we'll have during this energy crisis that we're having. So anyway, I'm coming towards the end of this painting now, so before I give you my final reveal, I'd just like to ask that if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, because it really helps get my videos pushed out, and any comments are welcome, so long as they're nice. And if you're not subscribed, then if you can consider subscribing, and then you can keep up with all my future uploads, tutorials, time lapses, and hopefully more in the future as well. And I think that's going to do it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!